Greetings and welcome to another episode of the Planetary Persuader. I am Cosmic Kev, your host, and this is for the week of February 14th through the 21st, 2014. So, what happens this week? Well, let's start with today, Friday, at uh, 3.53 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We have a full moon, folks, and that full moon is in the sign of Leo... And it is at 26 degrees, and that means that in Vedic astrology, it's also in Leo, in the nakshatra of Maga. And Maga is a really royal star. It's a regal birth star, and it deals with a luxurious, commanding life, and it deals with having many servants, many people to help you. You know, this would be like the Valentine's deal where you got other people to to roast your loved one or something, or to do special things, you know, like group massage or something, I don't know, something special, but, uh, but I think today is a very special day, the energy's high, the moon is going into Virgo tonight, um, around 11.30, a little bit before then, <clears throat> it is going into Virgo at 11.26 p.m., and, um, you know, when, when the moon's in Virgo, we tend to be perfectionist about things, but we do really good service work. Here's another amazing happening this week is uh, we have, we do have uh, Mercury had just gone retrograde back into Aquarius. And in a way, Mercury in Aquarius is better than Pisces because Mercury in Aquarius has a face. And when Mercury has a face, it can communicate better. So even though Mercury's retrograde it's back in Aquarius, so it's an air sign, and it's an air sign with a face, so we are communicating wisely, good things. Now, the sun goes into Pisces on the 18th, which is Tuesday, at 10 o'clock in the morning, and the moon will be in Libra that day, and um, it'll be in Libra most of the next day, too, that Wednesday, but that Wednesday night, the moon will be in Scorpio, and then the moon will trine the sun, And it'll be one of those really good Scorpio moons that we could talk deep mysteries and have really nice um, congress with uh, the erotic and morous object of our affection. This way I didn't leave anybody out, you know. You know, some people's object of affection might might be like a blow-up doll or something and... um, I just didn't want them, their feelings to be hurt or feel like they're discriminated against and throw a lawsuit on me. So, anyhow, without any further ado, we're going to go sign by sign in this week's uh, episode of The Planetary Persuader. <clears throat> All right, well, greetings, Aries. Welcome to your horoscope. So, here's the deal. Aquarius time is about your social life. It's about helpful friends. It's about preparing for the future. Sun is moving into Pisces as of Monday morning, and I mean Tuesday morning rather, and as of this Tuesday, you're going to be dealing with your karma. You're going to be dealing with all the booby traps and all the faux pas you went through in the last year, and so there'll be karma to pay for it. And not only will the sun be there, but Neptune's going to be there and Chiron's going to be there, so a lot of this is about whether you've paid attention to your spiritual life or not. And for some people, their spiritual life is a walk through nature. Some people, it's going to some special temple or something. Other people, it might be baseball cards. I'm not really sure what yours is, but you have to honor it, whatever it is, whatever makes you feel good. And so this is a time for that. And we still have the effect of Mars being in your seventh house. So you're having open enemies, people confronting you and saying, hey, you should be like this when you're already like that. 
And the one thing I love about you, Aries, is you're the one sign that says, oh, well, uh, F them all, you know. I'm not going to take that from anybody. <laughs> you know, you got to love it. You know, it's like kind of like uh, the devil may care attitude. Um, I would say that you've been doing good overall in your career with Venus in your 10th house. And uh, family could be a sense of co a source of comfort for you right now with Jupiter being there. So... There's nothing wrong with going to your family and, you know, you, you experience some ego crushing situations, not only with Mars being in the seventh house, but having Saturn in your eighth house is rather ego crushing. But what can you do? You know, it's a karma time. I'd say get a lot of sleep, pay attention to your dreams, try and make some good karma. That way, by the time we get to March 20th and your birthday starts, you'll have something happy to talk about. And speaking of happy, or at least well-contained and self-satisfied, hello, Taurus. So, Taurus, um, we're still having the good fortune from Venus being in your ninth house. <clears throat> One thing is to just say to yourself, I can be comfortable in a lot of situations I never thought I could be comfortable in before. You know, maybe they'll design a, a better sleeping bag that makes you want to go camping. I'm not really sure, you know. Um, but that's the type of thing. The other thing is just having a loving trip with your loved one or maybe going to a far distant place and having a love affair. That might work too. Um, on the other end of that, we've got Jupiter in your third house. So even though everyone else's communication might be crazy, you're enjoying having talks with your neighbors, your siblings, old friends. It's all working out. <clears throat> Um, as we move from the career house of um, the 10th house with Aquarius and go into Pisces, which is your 11th house, you'll have even more time to go to parties, more time to meet good people, and really discuss spiritual values, modalities of healing, and um, ways that you can secure a better relationship, too. Well, hello, Gemini, and welcome to your horoscope. So, Mercury is still retrograde, and sometimes that's rough. But I do say that when Mercury is in Aquarius, that rules your ninth house. So, there's a higher way of doing things. Educate yourself. Investigate. You know, they say condemnation is easier than investigation. I think we need to turn over some more rocks. We need to question the very premise of everything we've been told. That's not a bad idea because we might learn something new. And this is generally speaking how we learn new things. So this is a time of discovery for you. <clears throat> the sun is moving out of that wonderful, travely, educational ninth house into the hardcore. You're in the public eye. You got to show your talents and skills. You got to get a better career and a better job, 10th house. So that's what we're moving towards this week as the um, sun moves into Pisces. And uh, like I said last week, this is a good money year for you because of Jupiter being in your second house. And even um, Saturn in your sixth house, it's like you may have to deal with some health issues that have been nagging you. But if, you're, if you pay attention to them and you really work on them, you'll make some progress and you will get better. <clears throat> Well, greetings, Cancer, and welcome to your horoscope. So your primary concern is with feelings and with family and with love and having a knowledge of history, having a knowledge of your roots. Now, Aquarius time, you had to give up things for other people's will. You were subject to other people's property. You were subject to the rules of death, destruction, Birth, because there's usually birth after death, and even sex, you know, there's an intense passion that goes with this. And, but you needed the help of other people. Now, this week, the sun moving into Pisces, it's going to stimulate travel. It's going to stimulate higher education, higher philosophy, a way of living better than you had before, and a way of growth. Now, you have growth because you have the good fortune of Jupiter being in your first house. 
and you have some sense of discipline where a really good, big, creative project you want to do is much easier to fulfill because of Saturn and Scorpio. So things are getting watery, and I'm predicting that the drought in California is going to break. It's going to break down a little bit this week, and um, I'm, glad, I'm glad for that. And I'm hoping that this is a true prophecy, because I'll be really embarrassed if they, if they harp me out of my reign that I really want. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Terrible voice this week. Well, greetings, Leo. Welcome to your horoscope. So, we're still in a place, let's, let's say, you know, this full moon is about you. Isn't everything about you? Yes. <laughs> it is. Um, so, you're in a popular place, and I mean, it's a really special Valentine's Day when you've got moon and Leo, because it's easier to be focused on matters of the heart, and it's easier to be generous. And it's easier to be creatively expressive. So these are really good qualities, and I like seeing this. And I think you're going to make your significant other happy this week. That's Happy is a good flavor. Not to mention that kind of sexually passionate or confused, depending on how you look at it, Mercury. Um, well, not Mercury is more in your seventh house now, but um, Neptune and uh, Chiron. So there could be... You know, like a, like a Marvin Gaye night of sexual healing or something. I mean, everybody could use a little bit of that, you know. Just be patient. Take your time. Take some really good aphrodisiacs and, you know, be ready to enjoy yourself, you know. Um, unless you have someone who just says no. I mean, that's, you know. I say get out of those relationships quickly. Um, <laughs> Uranus and... In your uh, ninth house, it's, um, it's exciting to do long-distance travel. It's risky. There's shocks and surprises, but it's never a dull moment. Um, you got to come more in touch with your emotions this week. Your personal things that you want to do, they're going to be there. You might make some money over the weekend, so that's, that's always a nice thing. Get a little bit more pocket cash. You could use it. Great spirits here in you. Um, I would say work on issues that involve your family. They might seem hard, but you'll be honoring your ancestors by working on the hard stuff to make them better. Well, hello, Virgo, and welcome to your horoscope. Well, well, this full moon is almost as much about you as it is about Leo. I mean, moon does go into Virgo later that night. I mean, the moon had been full only a a matter of several hours before that, but it's still good. It's still a big fat moon, and it's still Valentine's Day, and um, you're working on perfecting love. And the nice thing about Virgo is that they like serving others. <clears throat> and I mean, what I hear is what the secret to real love is enjoying giving. If you enjoy giving, you're going to be a successful lover, no matter who you are. If you don't enjoy giving and you're all about taking, that must have been my... Uh, I had a relationship like that. I won't tell you who it is because she'll get really mad. But they both know who they are. <laughs> no, there might be more than both of them. I, I, <clears throat> it's okay. It doesn't matter. They're gone now. <laughs> and don't worry, neither of them were Virgos, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we've got a moon in Virgo for um, Saturday and Sunday. And um, I would say with Mars in your second house, you're more driven to find, make yourself more secure financially. You're more driven to sing a better song. You're also more driven to be a more aggressive communicator. That can get you in trouble. I hate it when I do that. Sometimes I do. Um, and on the other hand of that, there's Uranus in the eighth house, you know, and that's where the sex jokes come in, you know. You just got to watch out for that. But here's the good news is that Sun is moving into your seventh house along with Neptune and Chiron. So you can have a lot of really healing relationships right now and relationships that take you to a higher place that make you feel better and make the person that you're relating to feel better. So uh, that's good news for Virgo this week. <coughs> 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 hmm. 
well. Greetings, Libra, and welcome to your horoscope. So with Mars in the first house, you're much more motivated than you normally are. You're here to make things happen. So this is a big deal. And it's easier for you to act out independently, which will be to the woe of your partnership. But there's all kinds of surprises in your partnership because Uranus is in the seventh house. So this is a very, it's a very interesting time. Saturn in the second house, you know, financial difficulties may have or may be taking place, but they can, but if you work on them skillfully through this period, you'll find yourself in a place where you're sustainable. And that's not a bad place to be. Now, we're moving out of having the sun in your fifth house, which is really good for creative expression. It's good for paying attention to your children. It's good for love affairs. It's good for just having fun overall. It's moving into your sixth house, which is a lot of hard work. And it's a lot of teamwork, though, and making a group effort with other people. One of the things, of like the Beatles chart, a lot of them had a lot of stuff in the sixth house. It was like, they were, they were working hard. I mean, it sounds like it was fun, but no, they really did a lot of work and they had to do a lot of analysis and a lot of six house stuff to make those songs super groovy like they were and to make an effect and an impact on the world. You know, as we get into the six house, we find more and more our concerns with others become more important. And working on health issues is going to be huge. Now, you might get some more creative insights too, creative projects you were working on in the last couple of weeks, they're going to get better again as Mercury retrogrades back into Aquarius. So that's something to consider. I mean, even though there may be confusion for Mercury retrograde, don't worry about it. You can always write a song about your confusion and at least get something out of it. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I do not know. I do not know. It works every time. <laughs> well, greetings, Scorpio. Welcome to your horoscope. So, Aquarius time was primarily about family, home, and hearth. And now that we're in Pisces time, the concern is about children. It's about having fun. It's about love affairs. It's about your creative expression. And, you know, since your key phrase is, I create, you're, you're a real creative person. And, in fact, Scorpios who aren't creating are usually destroying things. So any one of you out there who's a Scorpio, keep that in mind that they who isn't busy being born is busy dying. So you've got to do something creative. <clears throat> in fact, the, the moon is going to go into Scorpio on uh, Wednesday night, the 19th, at 7.33 p.m. And it's going to train the sun in Pisces. So it's going to be a really good Scorpio moon. And even the next day, that Thursday, super groovy Scorpio day, the 20th. Um, the moon trines Neptune and it trines Saturn as well. And then the moon also sextiles Pluto. So all your little Scorpio wishes and fantasies might come true on the 20th. I mean, it's, it's possible. It's a Jupiter ruled day. It's good stuff. So I'm like, I'm excited for you. I'm happy for you. Because, um, you know, Aquarius time sort of a dry time and dry air signs. They sort of, they're so logical. They kind of blow the emotional fun that water signs have. So um, I'm really happy. And like I've said, I'm hoping that this juice hits the West Coast so that Oregon and California get all the rain they need. And um, we can grow our food again and our, and our animals will, will have some pasture to eat and everybody will be happy. It'll be a happy day. Skiers will have snow in the mountains and we will rejoice and be glad once more. <coughs> Well, greetings, Sagittarius. Welcome to your horoscope. <clears throat> so, Aquarius time is about neighborhood. It's about the environment for you. It's about communication with other people. Now, Mercury moves back into your third house of communication. So, in a lot of ways, the funny communication that happened at your family last week at a gathering or whatever, this week, it lightens up. It gets a little better. You somehow recollect your thoughts and say, okay, now I see what I did wrong. This is how I'm going to fix it. I'm going to do this. Jupiter's still in the eighth house. But once we get, you know, down to the middle of the summer, this coming summer, Jupiter's going to go in your ninth house. You're going to do all kinds of fun and groovy traveling, which is what you like to do. 
and your vision about the future and how you want to expand your life is going to be oh so much stronger. You're going to get it going on. And, but in the meantime, you want to work on the harder karma that you've accumulated. And with the sun moving into your fourth house, you want to be honorable to your parents. Honor your family. You want to fix up your house. You've got to fix a leak in your roof because the rain is coming. The emotional, empathetic water signs are going to be ruling really strong after Tuesday. And, um, you know, water can put out the fire. It can put out that thing that motivates you. So you got to be honest with yourself about that. Your social life is active. You're full of active social people motivating you. <clears throat> but the thing is, is that you've got to honor your feelings as we go into this week. <clears throat> Okay. Well, hello, Capricorn, and welcome to your horoscope. So, what I want to prepare you for this week is we're moving out of the zone of personal ambition for money and taking it to the place of communication and enhancing your neighborhood. So, you're going to have, with the sun going into Pisces, this is about self improvement. This is about baby steps, learning the basic information, working with your hands, communicating with your brothers, sisters, friends from high school and back in the day, and moving forward, getting a perspective where you can move forward and take things into the future in a better way. I think Thursday is going to be a really good day for you. Um, you still have Venus in the first house, moving, moving forward, so... You have a bit of creativity, you have a bit of love, you have a bit of beauty that you can share with us. <clears throat> you have friends in high places with um, the Saturn in Scorpio and with the moon moving into Scorpio on um, Wednesday night, Thursday. You're going to do some good things. You know, you're going to meet some good people, have some fortunate encounters. thing to keep in mind is... Um, Bloom where you're planted. Love where you live and live where you love. <clears throat> well, greetings Aquarius. Welcome to your horoscope. So we've only got a few days left of the sun in Aquarius. So after this weekend, after Monday, you'll wake up. Tuesday morning, sun will still be in Aquarius most likely unless you sleep in past 10 Pacific Standard Time because at 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, sun goes into Pisces and then it's more about where the money is, where the resources are, what you have and um, finding a song, finding a voice, gaining a new face and a new image for this new year for yourself. That's going to be more of crucial concern. <clears throat> like I said last week, you still might have some karma from your love life that you need to look at and you need to work out somehow. But one thing I would say with the sun moving into Pisces and Neptune being there and also um, Chiron is having healing modalities, having the right amount of vitamins and herbs to fortify yourself, eating better. You really are what you eat, taking better care of yourself, maybe getting a new hat, uh, maybe getting a face tattoo. I mean, Aquarius is the type of person that would do that. You know that, don't you? Not all of you, but some of you. Just to shock, just to shock people and make it a good conversation piece. And um, with Mercury moving back into your first house, you're going to get some epiphanies. You know, you're going to be getting some hits of new knowledge or old knowledge come back to you is like, oh yeah, that's where I left my keys. My gosh, I need to find them. <laughs> Maybe some things better than that. But, you know, when you need to go someplace and you need your keys or you need to make new ones, it's, it's nice finding your keys. <laughs> so with that said, um, remember that you live in a place where communication can be rather explosive and people... People don't understand you that you just say things just to blow minds anyhow because it's fun. I, I know what you mean. It is fun. And um, you can improve your health a lot this year. 
but this is a good year for your career, and it's also a good year to go on adventures. Take, take the long way home, as Supertramp would say. <laughs> okay. Greetings, Pisces. Welcome to your horoscope. And I want to say happy birthday to people that are Pisces that are having a birthday this week. Um, the sun goes into your uh, first house on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. <clears throat> and along with Neptune and Chiron, now with the sun joining, everything's coming up Pisces. And when the moon goes into Scorpio on Wednesday night and Thursday and Friday, you're going to be really happy. The full moon um, in late Leo kind of near Virgo, is approaching your seventh house. So I, I think there, it's going to be a really romantic moon this weekend for you. It could be a honey of a moon, a tasty, sweet moon that you just want to take a big bite out of and go, ow. <laughs> and Jupiter in the fifth house continues to motivate love. It continues to motivate creativity. And it motivates you to have good relationships with your children. So, I mean, Mars in the 8th house, you're a little bit impatient for things to happen. It's just, om mani pay me om, you know. Just shalom. Take your time. Get other people to help you when you need to. Don't, don't stress. Um, this would be a good week to take a trip, too. If you wanted to move into new territory or check someplace out you've never been to before, I love it. And uh, I'm thinking that the prayers are going to be answered. The rain dance is coming. And uh, that emotion of empathy and feeling for one another, which creates peace. That's part of you. <clears throat> and that's part of this week in the Planetary Persuader. Look forward to being with you next week when we do this again. La, la, la. Okay. Yeah. Citizen Television.